I'm here with Tahir Bashir in the fifth and last segment of the series where we've been talking about buying and selling a company but now we're going to talk about collaborations and the joint ventures so uh, these are becoming increasingly popular in the music industry and on a large scale front of course we know the examples of uh, Sony and Universal uh, creating Vivo uh, as, a, as a massive uh, video platform uh, together uh, you know first of all you know from aside from these massive examples you know what, what are the things that you really have to get right when you uh, and you have to think about when you uh, start a new partnership uh, you have to think about the the relationship that you're looking to create is it a long-term relationship or is it a one-off project um, that's quite important because ultimately you know there's going to be uh, potential funding issues uh, potential expenses and you know whether this is a profit share type of arrangement or a, 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 a revenue a fixed revenue type of arrangement um, in in the UK at least there's no specific law on, a, on, on how collaborations work so it could be a contractual arrangement right. if it's a, and usually that's more of um, effective for one-off short-term arrangements or if you're if both parties are investing into that arrangement then you could set up a joint venture company where both parties own that company but it has right. its own profit and loss account absolutely and so uh, what should be aware of when you're do, setting up this partnership because of course you know some of the companies that we're talking about uh, either have intellectual IP or uh, copyright IP and they, they don't want that to get confused in the process of the partnership how do you keep those uh, two companies separate even if they're working together um, uh, okay so so it's very important they have a clear contract in place which defines who's managing whose roles and responsibilities um, uh, it is to, to deal with stuff who has ultimate control uh, and how the revenues are dealt with um, also obviously whenever you collaborate um, the sensitive information right. so you have to think about how much sensitive information you disclose and even if you do disclose them they're disclosed under confidence um, sometimes people are a bit wary about collaborations about whether they're actually giving away know-how for their collaborators to then build up their own business so you have to deal with that uh, contractually in your arrangements yeah and I started the segment by talking about uh, Sony and Universal and of course uh, when you have a collaboration of that kind uh, even if it's not of that proportion you do come into uh, issues of uh, competition uh, clauses for example or, or problems uh, and how do you deal with those and how do you how uh, did two companies like those for example make sure that uh, they didn't have issues with the people saying you're creating a monopoly by creating this company yeah uh, competition law issues are big issues for the, the bigger you are then ultimately if you're creating a, a monopolistic route i.e. the market is being controlled because uh, there's fewer characters in that so there's right. issues around pricing um, restraint of trade all of those types of issues then that, that's something that needs to be looked at at the outset sometimes you have to lose some of your business in order to gain the collaboration of the joint venture so that might mean siphoning off areas that um, then make you less of a monopolistic issue ultimately you need to have that competition law advice at the outset um, uh, because otherwise if you don't then you could be spending a lot of money putting things together which then get effectively taken down by the regulators yeah and uh, finally I want to talk about collaborations and uh, taking it to a much much smaller scale I think it makes sense to just uh, touch upon uh, collaborations between uh, artists as well because uh, that's something that's becoming increasingly important especially in uh, some some more uh, modern genres uh, uh, modern genres God. <laughs> Let me cut that. Especially in uh, hip hop uh, and uh, R&B, you know, there's tracks where you can find like ten collaborators on the same track. So, how how do the artists uh, manage to sort out those collaborations without ending up in a dispute, which is sometimes the case? Yeah, but collaborations are not nothing new. Duets, you know, people appearing on other people's uh, recordings as featured artists or guest vocalists is. Um, very common um, and quite often quite loose arrangements as well where it becomes difficult is when obviously whenever there's money involved as to who gets what and also who owns what so you usually between artists um, even if there's a loose arrangement there should be some sort of a contractual arrangement which uh, effectively says you know uh, what who who owns what 
what is the royalty income stream um, and also depending on the type of collaboration sometimes you get what's called first options i.e you know i'm going to appear on yours uh, but if you're going to do some stuff around this recording you know come back to me first that's quite often the case with producers who will put their time and energy into producing certain works and then want the first option for the next bit of work or the next few tracks around that so with collaborations it's just being clear as to what the arrangement is between the two parties not just then but moving forwards and how the income gets divided between that well thank you so much for your time thank you very much and if you've come to uh, listen to this segment by itself uh, well you've missed another 19 episodes that were recorded uh, with us here uh, talking about all sorts of issues surrounding uh, music law so uh, go and catch those up on uh, youtube.com slash digital music trends thanks for listening Thank you.